Okay, we got some posters right here. You've seen a smaller version of the poster for uh, Rachel and for um, Bessie Smith, but this is actually part of our um, regular concert repertoire. The song is called Abrialash. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, Deborah. More or less. Okay, I'm not non-Portuguese speaker, so, <laughs> but Deborah is, and um, and she's given me a little bit of a background on the song because I, I I sit on my computer and I'm looking for female uh, composers, musicians from around the world, and here I'm finding out about this wonderful woman named Chiquinha Gonzaga. Um, that um, is considered the first lady of popular song in Brazil. And she has all kinds of uh, acolytes uh, given to her, uh, including uh, celebrating in Brazil, celebrating a day that is dedicated to the popular song, uh, the day that she was born. So Chiquinha Gonzaga wrote the first Brazilian Marchinha, and it's a march that we're not able to perform for you in its, in its regular form here because we're missing that big snare drum. But we will do our best. We will use some percussion. And if any of you would like to join us on percussion, we have some extra. So let us know. Uh, the song, Abriala, she's clear the aisles. I'm coming through. And you could probably <laughs> guess what, what the song is about when we're talking about aisles and people standing on, on each side. Um, so this was uh, sang in a carnival and it continues to be a very popular song in Brazil today. Um, if you want to learn more about Chiquinha Gonzaga, there is a wonderful website that describes uh, all of her work and her music, and they even did a mini-series in Brazil about her life. She's a very interesting figure. So, Abrialas, we're going to start um, um, a more samba version of the song in, in uh, um, Missing the uh, Snare Marching. But it's a lovely song. We're going to attempt to sing it in Portuguese. May I invite you, Deborah, to sing with us? Oh, we're so lucky. I'd like you to give a big hand to Deborah Rocha. <laughs> and just, just a quick thing about Deborah. She's, um, I, I know some of you know her because she, she is a regular or semi-regular here. She's a singer-songwriter. Um, she sings in Portuguese and English, and she has her wonderful CDs as well. Uh, and she's the one that actually can speak Portuguese, and I learned a lot about Brazilian music from Deborah playing with her over the years. So, uh, Deborah, you can have my mic uh, if you want. Would you like to? Oh, we have them right here. <laughs> <laughs> no excuses. Oh. Actually, I'm putting her on the spot. So, if you don't want to uh, sing, you don't have to. No, I'm happy to. So, um, I'll always sing Brazilian music. Right. <coughs> But you're low and I'm high. So you, do you Are we going to meet in the middle? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> what key is it in? It's in C. I'm, doing the, I'm taking the melody, so however you guys want to. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll join you in the refrain. Um, okay. Okay. So we'll see. I'm going to give you the mic. So we're going to start with our roaring Brazilian carnival parade, and we're getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, first percussion. Oh, abri alas, eu quero passar Eu sou da lira, não posso negar Eu sou da lira, não posso negar Oh, abri alas, eu quero passar Oh, abri alas, que eu quero passar Eu sou da lira, não posso negar Eu sou da lira, não posso negar Oh, abri alas, que eu quero passar Oh, abri alas, eu quero passar Eu quero passar Eu que vai ganhar 
Well, we like to keep the spirit of spontaneity a little bit. Thank you so much, Deborah, and that was really fun. So, this is uh, another song actually off of my CD. It's called Nya Terra Cabo Verde. And just briefly, um, I wrote the song uh, in about in 2005 so before I had gone to Cabo Verde for the first time. And the, the lyrics basically say, I eat the food and I speak the language, but I have never laid eyes on my country, Cabo Verde. I have family who were born there, I have family who have died there, but I have never laid foot on my country, Cabo Verde. Why does someone long for a place they've never been? How does a heart cry for a country it's never seen? But I have faith that one day I will awaken on the shores of Cabo Verde. Entra come bo comida, entra papia bo lingua, ma nunca un bao ya, nha terra cabo verde, in ten familia que nesela, in ten familia que morre la. Ma nunca un pena, nha terra, cabo verde. Entra comer, boa comida, entra papia, boa língua. Ma nunca un baoja, nha terra, 
Cabo Verde Em tem família que nesce lá Em tem família que mora lá Mas não compõe pena Minha terra Cabo Verde como alguém te tem saudade para um cabelo nunca vai Para o meu coração te chora Para um país eu nunca já Mas esperança está na minha Já não sabe como um dia Antes de cortar Em te comer boa comida Em te papiar boa língua Mas nunca um pouco pena Minha terra Cabo Verde So um, when we were selecting original compositions to perform here at Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, <laughs> I tried to think of uh, songs that I've written, because uh, I'm primarily a songwriter, that um, were poetic. So um, this is the first of two that we're going to perform, and it's called All Because of You. And it features Tall on accordion, which is a real treat. And it also features Candida on sand blocks, <laughs> which we are using to simulate the sound of brushes on a snare, but that's okay. 
The djembe is for the next one. <laughs> A moment to tune. Now with real tuning. love song it's called all because of you and it is available on the cd in the back of the room ready one two three four <laughs> Your eyes rescue me from a cold and cloudy day. Your kisses carry me to an island far away. Your smile gives me hope when I am led astray. All because of you Your touch brings the sunlight back To my darkened skies Your laughter gives my heart Wings with which to fly your embrace brings tears of joy to my tired eyes, all because of you. When you come to me with your love light, Lord, I want you more because in my heart I know the honesty between us shining all aglow and so so we grow melts the ice around my frozen will and when you call my name I can't deny the thrill for when I want to run your love renders 
push me still All because of you All, all because of you All because of you Malice in Latin means apple, as well as evil. No wonder the apple embodies both good and bad, purity and eroticism. When I moved to Old Frog Pond Farm, I found many rows of red delicious apples growing in the orchard. The flavor of red delicious is quite boring as apples go. So I decided I would change them over to another variety. To do this, you need cyan wood, the term for the small twigs of first year growth that are used to graft onto a trunk, branch, or rootstock. I went to a cyan wood exchange and grabbed a twig of the Almada apple, along with several other varieties that were spread across an old pool table. Not knowing anything about its characteristics, I chose Almada because it was named after one of the largest cities in Kazakhstan, Almaty, which translates as full of apples. Almaty is near the foothills of the Tian Shan Mountains, the forests that are the birthplace of our domesticated apple. And today, pears, apples, plums, and cherries still grow in the wild in these forests and are sold in the markets in Almaty. I took my cyan wood home and grafted a red delicious tree with this Almada. After three years, which is all it takes, when this tree developed its first flower buds, I was surprised. Apple blossom buds are usually enrobed in a pink sheath which then open to pale white petals. The Almada buds weren't pink, however, but dark red, like the scarlet letter adorning Hester Prine's chest in Nathaniel Hawthorne's novel. Four days later, when the orchard was a cloud of white petals, this tree's blossomed open to a lovely pink. When the leaves came in, they were not green, but a bronzy color similar to some crab apples. After pollination, its dime-sized apples were dark red, not green like every other apple in the orchard. All summer long, I kept my eye on this tree. Friends walking with me through the orchard would remark, what's that pointing to the Almada? It was easy to see that this tree was marked. The apples were quite small, but perfectly formed and deep red. In mid-August, I stopped by the Almada to taste one of its fruits. My large bite of apple exposed deep plum-colored flesh. It was crazy and wonderful and all wrong. It didn't look like an apple at all, but more like a ravishing purple plum. It was hard and sour, not yet ripe. Charmed, I hurried back to the house to share my discovery with my family. I looked up Almada and learned that this red-fleshed apple was developed by a Dr. Nels Hansen at the South Dakota Agricultural Experiment Station. Dr. Hansen was inspired to breed a red-fleshed eating apple after seeing one growing on his 1897 trip to Russia. The Almada is the cross he made between a Russian apple, the beautiful Arcade, and Fluke 38, a crab apple. 
Even though our Almadas were not quite ripe, I decided to use a few of them in an apple galette. The red <coughs> Almada wove, wove lovely red ribbons through the white apples of the dessert. It held its color even when cooked. I made a Russian apple cake next and was again delighted by the red slices of the Almada flowing through the cake. Even when fully ripe, the Almada's taste is still sharp, but biting through its deep red skin and into the ruby-colored flesh, the sensual appeal is greater than biting into any white-fleshed apple. Although some people say that the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil was actually a pomegranate, I disagree. I can imagine the serpent winding around a branch, tempting Eve with a ripe red-fleshed apple. How could she have refused? Would you have resisted? If you come for an orchard visit, I'll show you the tree. But be prepared, there might just be a snake. <laughs> Thank you.